In today's episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief, I sit down with Danielle to talk all about her new game, Nutstash, that's on Kickstarter currently. Then, we'll see what's on Kickstarter, but first, a message about our sponsors. This episode is proudly powered by one of our Kickstarter backers, Redwell Games, and their latest game, Six Gun Showdown, the fastest playing tension-filled game of Wild West shootouts for ages 9 years and older. That's on Kickstarter until Friday the 5th of July. More to come within our Kickstarter corner portion of the show. This episode is powered by Gosh Darn Bubbles from Sandwich Bag Games, which is simple to learn and play fast and fun. So much fun, in fact, that Michael Wright, who is an unfiltered gamer, went out and got a bubble machine. So run on over and check out their Kickstarter, which we'll have a link in the show notes. Or just head on over to sandwichbaggames.com, look for an interview with them, and if you're listening after that, go back and listen. Plus, be on the lookout for a giveaway over at thegiveawaygeek.com. And if you want some super fast, simple fun, make sure you back Gosh Darn Bubbles on Kickstarter before Thursday, the 20th of June. I love it when a good game hits the floor running on Kickstarter, such is the case with this game. This episode is proudly powered by Bard Games and Fickle, a fairy board game featuring the art of Amy Brown. Fickle is a quick set collection game with unique scoring and press your luck mechanics, customizable gameplay, and gorgeous art. You have five rounds to win the ritual of ascendancy out with your fellow players by manipulating their fairy cards. Choose a fairy family to gain its power and add it to your scoring alliance. The winner must gather a single fairy from each family or shoot the moon to win with a single faction. It sounds like an awesome game, and the art as well is spectacular. Want to know more? Well, go give my interview with the designer a quick listen in my interview entitled, Are You Fickle? You Might Be a Fairy. Then after that, make sure you go and enter their giveaway we're doing with them over at thegivewaygeek.com in which one winner will receive Sherlock Holmes' The Vanishing Man, Pocket General World War II, and a playmat featuring fickle art. The prize is valued at approximately 100 USD. Most importantly though, make sure you check out their Kickstarter for Fickle that reached its funding goal in only 12 hours, and then back it before Tuesday the 18th of June. <laughs> Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf, the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. <laughs> now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Squirrels and chipmunks competing to find and store nuts before winter arrives. Watch out for predators! The hawk flies over and steals a nut. The coyote isn't interested in the nuts. He wants your stash. The coyote picks which stash to undo, freeing the player's nuts on their side. When winter hits, any unstashed nuts are up for grabs. Congratulations! To the species with the most points at the end, you've survived the winter. Did that sound familiar to you guys? It didn't to me either, but this is a story of Nutstash, a new game that's currently on Kickstarter. And tonight, we're lucky enough to have on the creator mastermind behind this game. Is that right, Danielle? Is that how you fall in line with Nutstash? Yeah, I am the creator as well as the graphic designer. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much for joining us on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. We really appreciate it. No, I'm super excited to be here. Now, before we jump into your game, let's rewind a little bit, if we could. How did you get into playing tabletop board games, Danielle? You know, I was lucky enough to grow up with people around me, some family members, as well as friends that just have always been gaming. I played a few of the... Uh, 
I guess, out of Hasbro games when I was younger, thanks to our kind of neighbors, the Godwins. They were about a block away. They had the games that you wouldn't have gotten unless you had Amazon or really a game store nearby. But back then, there really wasn't. So I can thank them for really getting into it. But I didn't actually start designing games until maybe a year and a half ago, except for, you know, the occasional twisting the rules of Monopoly or whatever I wanted to do to make the game a little more fun for me. There you go. And you talked to some neighbors having Amazon and different game stores and whatnot. What kind of games did they introduce you to or what games were you playing with them? Oh, gosh, they had a little bit of everything. Uh, one of my favorites was this game called Cathedral. It was similar to Blockus, except it was a two-player game made out of like very chunky wood stained two different colors where you're trying to take over, I guess, the cathedrals in the middle and you take up the rest of the medieval area and just kind of block each other off. I used to love that game, mainly because I won every time. And they had Quelf before Quelf became a bigger thing. And, oh my gosh, they just had a little bit of everything back then. Awesome. And what are you playing these days, Danielle? Definitely playing a lot heavier games than back then. Less party games. But I've been playing a little bit of like Dominion. I've been playing some Game Right games. Uh, a lot of Catan. I got the new Game of Thrones version pretty recently. So I've been excited to play that. <laughs> awesome. And you talked about uh, heavier games or whatnot. On the other spectrum, or maybe it's not... But it seems like it might be less heavy. Um, is Nutstash word on the street as you create a new game? What can you tell us about Nutstash? Nutstash definitely is a lighter game. It's made more for the family or trying to introduce kids into gaming because there are some light educational elements. There's a little bit of math, a little bit of matching, some symbol identification. But basically, you're going to be rolling dice to try to match up with cards to collect both stash cards and nut cards. And you're trying to either match or add up nuts to fill your stash cards. So that way, either if you're playing for the Team Chipmunk or Team Squirrel, you stash the most nuts before winter hits, and then you win. Okay, awesome. So for say me and you sat down to play it, what's my turn going to look like, or how does the game look? So the fun thing about this game is it's all real time so everyone is rolling dice at the same time trying to match the same card and you're trying to grab that card before other people so you can think of kind of spoons or craps or uh, egyptian rat killer any of those games where you're kind of like digging in you maybe might get a little nail mark but it's very high energy a great icebreaker game so that sounds pretty cool and let's see here it's for how many players can play it you can play two to six i always suggest playing in teams because it's a little bit more fun but you can of course always have an odd number and play for yourself it's just fun because with teams i tend to see that people will break into one person's going to consistently keep rolling for new cards while the other person will more focus on the stashing of cards because any cards left over are going to be negative points so if someone is improperly doing their math equation so maybe they don't know one nut plus two nut equals a three stash card and maybe they mess that up just because it's like a time test you get a little anxious you're going quickly you might mess it up those all become negative points at the end so it's kind of nice to see teams break up into this person might do this job or this person might do this where if you're playing one-on-one -on -one, you kind of have to figure out how to multitask in a way to be able to look for cards that you still need while cards that you need to stash simultaneously Okay, awesome. So it sounds cool. I, I don't know if you've jumped on the whole craze or seen the craze going on about roll and write games where you roll the dice and write something down. This sounds similar, but it's like a roll and stash game, I guess, kind of. <laughs> yeah, no, I do like the roll and write games, but it, it's a little bit different. I, I mean, I enjoy roll and write too. You get to be a little bit more creative with those ones. Oh, cool. But yeah, it seems like you, so you roll, if I understand correctly, you roll, and then if your dice match up to the right cards or whatnot, you stash them in your, for points at the end? Yeah, you bring them over to your side, and if you have the right cards to make a stash, then you do it. And that way it protects the other team from stealing your cards at the end of the game when winter hits. Or we have two predators that come out and will either undo a stash if you're a coyote or if you're a hawk it's going to swoop over and take your nuts even though we should all know that predators would probably have taken the squirrel or the chipmunk before they would have taken the nuts but it's a it's more kids family friendly so they're just taking the nuts <laughs>
Well, I guess they could uh, be trying to lure them out because if the squirrel or the mice or whoever it is, if they run out of nuts, they won't have anything to eat and then they'll be more likely to come out maybe. <laughs> I guess that's true if we're going for a darker version. <laughs> oh, boy. No, that's good that it's kid-friendly and you talk about education. So mainly is it math? Is that how education is involved then? There's definitely the elements of just some simple addition. And there's also the elements of each of the cards artwork that was done by Alan Cooper. All of the nut cards are actually places that you would find nuts just in your everyday life. So maybe it's chestnuts roasting on an open fire or in a nutcracker's mouth versus the stash cards that are actual places that chipmunks and squirrels would stash their nuts. So maybe it's in a hole, a tree trunk, under your house. But they're really cute illustrations to kind of just like teach you about that. And then the two predators I chose, the coyote and the hawk, they're more based from my hometown, which I'm originally from Flagstaff, Arizona. So a lot of people don't really know what a coyote exactly is. And honestly, that was the hardest artwork for us to even figure out is trying to get the difference between a coyote and a wolf. What's the difference? They have a longer stout, just like a, we tried to make sure it didn't look too much like Wiley Coyote when we did it. And then they have more of a sandier colored coat, even though you can find a coyote that's more of the grays that a wolf is. They're also typically a little more scrappy, smaller and pointed ears more than, I guess, a little bit more pointed. It's honestly very similar. You might find two and think which one's which just is like a run to the litter <laughs> oh okay interesting yeah I didn't, I didn't know that so that's pretty cool and with the education um word on the street is you recently showed up on a board gaming with education i didn't get a chance to listen yet but you talked to dustin for a little bit too i did yeah we had a great conversation about how to add those kind of elements into the class i mean I'm a big fan of playing games to learn. It keeps people's attention and it also gets you away from your phone or computer because I know I spend a lot of time on my computer and I kind of need board games. And that's probably why I got so into gaming is it's a way to interact with your friends without really having a screen in front of you. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's kind of nice. So that's pretty cool. So during playtesting, Danielle, was there anything you guys had to scratch because it just wouldn't work for Nasdash? Yeah, we did have to change a few things. Originally, the Predators weren't even a part of the game, so that actually got added a little bit later into playtesting, as well as people would just continue to roll and roll, and both teams would have not wanted the card because eventually you realize, like, oh, I don't need any more stash cards. All I need are nut cards. So I added the rule that if neither side wanted it, you could say, I don't want it, stop rolling. And then everyone would roll lowest number, which is different than most games, would receive whatever the card is. And that's same with the Predator's actions. Whoever has the lowest number will take the action. Okay, so you're acting as a Predator, so you roll a lower number, you can have the Predator attack the other team or whatnot? Exactly. The fun thing, though, is the Predator is not always a bad thing because towards the end of the game, if a Coyote undoes one of your stash and removes a stash card and releases your nuts in front of you, you can now use those nuts to fill up other stash cards so you have less negative cards. But also, if you don't need those extra nuts... It's actually better for the team that just like played the card because at the end, any nuts that aren't stashed are up for grabs once winter hits. So you could fill up any remaining stash. So honestly, if you are at the end of the game, you'd rather have extra nuts on your side because the other team could take them. So your negative points are gone. But of course, they also can get bonus points by doing simple addition or matching cards that are less probable awesome and it sounds it sounds like a pretty fun game now you talked to somebody else did the art but you're the graphic designer so what's your role in the, all of this then for the graphic design i guess well i created it and i actually did the initial sketches for all of them so i guess i was kind of like the art director as well but with graphic design it's been figuring out what symbols i wanted to use where i wanted to put them putting together the kickstarter page the rule book and all of that fun stuff. I mean, laying out everything. I have a print as well as a graphic design background. So that has really helped in talking to the manufacturers. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Now, when it comes to Nutstash, what makes your game pop is one my audience should go check out. And if they like what they see on the Kickstarter, back it today. Well, there's very few games that are both short, easy to learn, but then also entertaining for both adults and kids as well as if you watch the unfiltered gamer review not many games have my mechanics or at least the exact mixture of it and i feel that with the artwork and just the overall theme of trying to get off your phone real time takes maybe 
15 to 20 minutes, depending on how many players. It's a lot of fun and it goes pretty quickly. I mean, it's a great start to a game night or it's a great transition to get maybe your spouse that's not really into gaming or friends that are more on the casual side or even your kids that, I mean, you want to start eventually someday maybe playing D&D with you. I mean, it's a great game that people I have seen just like walking by me have wanted to sit down and play just because they like the artwork and they like the energy and the jokes that come out of it because, oh my gosh, so many great puns and... I have just had a lot of fun making it and playing the game. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds pretty fun, and it looks like a pretty cool game. So, yeah, so Unfill Their Gamer, it looks like also Logan Chops and Tantrum House maybe reviewed it as well. Yeah. Cool, awesome. And they, so that's pretty cool. And I've been seeing a lot more of the real-time games as of late. They seem pretty cool where everybody's playing at the same time. I think I've noticed with at least my friend group, all of my friends are more on the casual side. I use like the Meetup app to play the more heavy games like Cry Havoc. But with them, people have shorter attention spans. As soon as you're playing a game where you have to like take turns, you notice that people are popping on their phones as soon as it's not their turn. They're not really as engaged, which is why I wanted as my first game to go on Kickstarter to be something that even me testing it, I cannot record anything because like you have to be 100% in the game. Otherwise, you're either letting yourself down or your teammates down. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, keep everybody engaged. So that's awesome that you were able to do that. And how did you know when you're ready to go to Kickstarter then? Well, I mean, I've been working on it since last year in September. I had been on the different Facebook pages. I've been learning more about Kickstarter. And I felt that I found a manufacturer that could do a lower count of games, about 500. And I felt I built up a good enough base where I could get this initial game rolling. I will say that since I am the only person really working on it, I did have an illustrator and an animator help me with the project, but I am basically the entire team of DMR creative group. But from that, (laughs) I've definitely decided that in the future, I'm either going to partner with others or pitch to other game companies for future games just because how much uh time it takes to run the kickstarter why is that no it's definitely the time management i mean i already have a full-time job a part-time job but it's something where this is a passion project for me so it's more about getting my name out there putting out a game that i know i have had a lot of fun with my friends i've had a ton of fun play testing it at charity events play testing it at unpub protospiel i have been sending it out there and it's like i know this is not a game for a euro player but it's a perfect game for someone who's into like hasbro game right in fact game right actually had it for seven months play testing it before they eventually decided to pass on it so i know that it's a game that's going to be enjoyable by a large market of people i mean I'm excited to see people play it more. Well, yeah, that's exciting. So and we'll make sure we leave all the links in the show notes so they can come on over and check out the Kickstarter. We'd encourage you to do it. And if you like what you see and you just go ahead and um, back it so you can get the game. So you don't overpromise and under deliver. They go ahead and back it. When would they be able to start stashing their own nuts, Daniel? <laughs> They would be getting it in January of next year. I am hoping to get it out sooner than that. But that is our target goal right now. Awesome. And like I said, we'll leave all the links in the show notes. Now, mine is coming there to your hometown to stalk you. How can people go about keeping up with you and what you might have going on in the future over there at DMR Creative Group? Well, you can go to our website. It's www.dmrcreativegroup.com slash games. Right now on there, we have Nutstash for a Kickstarter, as well as my next game called Curbside. That is actually on Tabletopia right now for free if anyone wants to check that out. Okay, so somebody's listening later on after the Kickstarter. Um, what's Curbside? What can you tell us about that? Curbside is my next game. I'm actually going to be at Origins next week playtesting it as well as showing it off to different publishers. Basically, you're going to be playing as a taxi driver and dispatch is going to be phoning in different passengers and the locations that they need to get to. So as the driver, you're going to be using different tiles, so some hand management, as well as placing tiles to find a pathway to get to the passenger and then to their destination. But of course, there are some other cards that are going to be affected. You're going to have a little bit of construction, some potholes. 
Dispatch occasionally is going to be phoning in the wrong location, which is really a card that other players can use to either benefit themselves or screw over another person. So you have that beautiful take that element, which I always love. And the board is set up like an XY coordinate using two dice to completely randomly place the passengers and their destinations. So there's really no way to rig the game, and it's going to be different every time you play it. But in order to win the game, what you're trying to do is collect the most passengers while managing your gas because with every movement, you lose a little bit of gas. Oh, wow. You got me intrigued. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Definitely check it out on Tabletopia. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, it looks sounds like pretty fun as well as Nutstash that's currently on Kickstarter through the 4th of July, it looks like. So, yeah, I don't want to keep you all night, but we really appreciate you coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief with us to talk all about Nutstash tonight, Danielle. No, thank you for having me. And really quickly, um, word on the street is you're doing a giveaway with us over at thegiveawaygeek.com. What can somebody go ahead and try to win? Well, for our giveaway, I'm actually going to be giving away a large-sized uh, Nutstash t-shirt as well as the game once it's been funded. So once it's funded in January, you will receive the game. But just in case, while you're waiting, you will get that t-shirt right away. Oh, there you go. So they w- they won't have to go without clothes or whatnot. So that's good. Or maybe they just an extra t-shirt. So that's cool. Exactly. It's very comfortable. I mean, even if you wear it as a sleeping shirt, I wear it a lot, honestly. I have so many of them. People kind of wonder if I'm doing laundry. <laughs> Oh, well, that's good. Now they don't have to worry if they if they listen to the interview. But yeah, I really appreciate you coming on tonight to talk to us all about it, Daniel. No, thanks for having me. It's been a blast. No problem. Wow, that was great sitting down with Danielle. Now I'm even more excited to play Nutstash than I was before. If you feel the same way as I do, make sure you run on over and check out her Kickstarter and back it today. Plus, don't forget to check out the giveaway we're doing with her over at the giveawaygeek.com or the bottom of these show notes. It can be found as well. And enter, you might win. Take a walk, not to the corner store, but to Kickstarter Corner. What is this place? What is it doing here? In the Leaves computer. Oh, it's Kickstarter Corner with the Leaves. He stood squinting in the noon, day sun. The braggart youth in front of him with something to prove. Hey, old timer, how long has your pine box queen measured up for? Came the shrill voice from down the road. The ineffective taunt barely covering the shake in the kid's voice. Longer than you been breathing, child, came his gruff reply. Jones noticed the kid twitch and reached for his rusty shooting iron. Did that sound familiar to you? Don't worry, we're here so it will. It's part of the story of Six Gun Showdown. Six Gun Showdown is a quick 5 to 10 minute game where players are characters in a Wild West shootout. The game combines strategy, memory, and a dexterity element. Like a quick draw that serves to generate tension and guides the players to read their opponent's actions. Really immersing them into the feeling of being in a shootout. Designed as a small box game that is as quick to learn as it is to play, Six Gun Showdown can be enjoyed as part of a board game night either as a quick game between other games or run as a small tournament of link games. Players can choose one of six characters that each have their own deck of cards and unique dice that require different strategies to be successful. This gives Six Gun Showdown layers of tactical depth that will have you playing the game again and again. Go back the quick draw card game for those with nerves of steel Six Gun Showdown before Friday the 5th of July and make sure you're subscribed to Getting Geeky with Game Relief so you don't miss my sit down with the mastermind of this game when we have our showdown episode. I'm a huge fan of Scooby Doo so this game greatly reminds me of such. As you might know, escape rooms are all the rage, but someone is taking it to the next level. During a quiet stroll through the park one peaceful evening, you're attacked from behind and knocked unconscious. You wake up blindfolded. You remove the strip of cloth from your eyes and find yourself in the middle of a forest. Directly in front of you, under the moonlight, stands a weathered hand-painted wooden sign that reads, Camp Hackaway. Next to you is a flashlight with a note attached, welcome to body count, 
Terror at Camp Hackaway Board Game, which is a horror-themed board game for two to four players. Try to be the first to escape Camp Hackaway. It includes a Kickstarter exclusive expansion pack. Body Count Terror at Camp Hackaway is the first chapter in the Body Count series of horror-themed board games from Game Master J. In this chapter, you've been kidnapped and wake up in the outskirts of Camp Hackaway and must survive the night while searching for the one item that will allow you to escape. Meanwhile, crazed serial killer Hack and Hank stalks the campground, eliminating players one by one. Will you survive? Find out by backing Body Count Tear at Camp Hackaway board game before Thursday, the 4th of July. Thanks to another one of our great Kickstarter backers, we've got another game to add to your arsenal for Kickstarter Corner this week. Bellum of Mutants and Men. One box, countless strategies, battle it out in a tactical two-player card game where hand management and positioning are key. Behold the world of Bellum, with two known factions, Gabalos Colonies and Sapien Kingdom, which will you side? Will you be allied with the Gobalos Colonies as they conquer new territory to make room for the ever-multiplying brood? Perhaps you will take up arms with the Sapien Kingdom and assist the last of mankind as they struggle for survival. You may even embrace a devious alliance of both factions to complete your barracks if you're brave enough. Battle it out and become a master tactician in the world of Bellum. Back Bellum of Mutants and Men on Kickstarter before Wednesday the 3rd of July. Tell them Game Relief sent you. I'm a big fan of retro Nintendo games. I was quite glad to hear that one of our proud Kickstarter backers, Vespius Media, just launched Montrosity Rampage which gives me the feel of none other than the video game Rampage that I loved back in the day. Unlike the board game formerly known as Rampage, Monstrosity Rampage is a real-time co-op speed dice smash the city game that elevates your adrenaline levels to the maximum. It's even got an awesome narrative fight the evil genius Dr. Spotnik with your monster squad in this epic city smashing game. Even though here in the Leaf household we prefer competitive games, I'm going to back it now and you should too. If you had to add a classification to my video game tendencies, you could say I'm more of a retro kind of guy. Or just old, as the family likes to call me. So, my favorite gaming system of all time is the original Nintendo Entertainment System. I also love me some Tetris 99. I've been playing a lot of that on the Switch. They recently had an event in which if you scored 100 points, you get Tetris in the theme of Game Boy. Game Boy Tetris. Wow. I got it and am loving it. So, when I saw a Dungeon Royale board game, I was quite pleased. Reason being, the box is in the shape of a, you guessed it, a Game Boy from back in the day. I've got to have it. I'm not the only one who feels that way either. It reached its funding goal in a measly two hours and one minute. They were going for $8,000 and are sitting at just over $46,000 at the time of this recording. Dungeon Royale board game is a video game turned board game. First game cartridge of the series to come. Full of death, stealing, heroes, and dragons. It's like a video game, but it's not. This is an all-out battle royale to see who will win the victor's spoils and exit with the stone of life. And you can tell your mom it's not a video game, but it kind of is. You move through the dungeon at the same time you attack each other with magical, powerful, or crude weapons. You try to level up before your opponents, and you even die and then respawn like a video game. You will steal artifacts and treasures from each other, and of course at times you'll run away from the destructive dragon. And did I tell you, the box that comes in is awesome sauce? 
Well, it is. Intrigued? I thought you might be. Run on over right now and check out their Kickstarter campaign and back Dungeon Royale board game before Thursday the 20th of June. Plus, if I can align my cards right, I'm hoping to be able to get them on the show so we can find out more. So make sure you subscribe to Getting Geeky with Game Relief on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. Have you been preparing for the zombie apocalypse? You might be just about ready for it, but... Are you ready for the final minutes of said apocalypse? I didn't think so. Then you're going to need this new game, Final Minutes, The Zombie Apocalypse, which is a board game that puts your survival instincts to the test. If you like gaming and you like a challenge where skill and chance are both involved, then you will like this game. If you are also one of those select few who doesn't want to be eaten by the zombies, then Final Minutes, the zombie apocalypse, is definitely for you. Don't be like those people in the Midwest when a storm is scheduled to come to town that are scouring the grocery store for everything they need to get through the storm. Because when the zombies come, the weather guy isn't going to be forecasting such things. So head on over to Kickstarter and back Final Minutes, the zombie apocalypse today. Because I really don't want them to eat your brains. If I were a zombie, I'd never eat your brain. I just want your heart, yeah, I don't want your heart. I just want your heart, yeah, oh. If I were a zombie, I'd never eat your brain. I just want your heart, yeah, I don't want your heart. I just want your heart, cause I want you. Or I guess in that instance, we could save your heart. Either way... Don't miss out and back Final Minutes of Zombie Apocalypse today. I'm going to have John the Creator on the show, so make sure you tune in or come back and listen to my Final Minutes episode to save your brain or heart, as Stephanie Maybe so eloquently puts it in that rendition of the zombie song. The Qualic Report. Time is running out. The constant centuries of war and pollution have taken their toll on our home of Anthobray. Your people are counting on you to save them. Gather the resources you need, build your ship, and escape before it's too late. Only one civilization will survive and the clock is ticking. Did that sound familiar to you guys? It didn't to me either, but this is a story of last days of Athelbray Apocalypse. It's a strategy resource gathering game where the planet falls to pieces beneath your feet and the first to build a ship and escape wins. Had some tech issues with them in which we're working to resolve so you can enjoy my interview with the creators. It takes what we love from No Escape the Game and adds some more depth to it in my opinion. Last Days of Anthoray brings together a myriad of familiar mechanics that collate into an exciting and unique gaming experience. With a modular board and five different civilizations to pick from, no game is ever the same. The game starts with a slow burn to help prepare your civilization for the perils ahead. Throughout the game, tiles are flipped and removed as Athelray literally crumbles beneath your feet. Every five rounds, the danger increases as the world falls apart faster and faster, and the odds of tragedy befalling your scouts grows ever more likely. For two to five players ages 12 and up, 30 to 45 minutes per player. Be on the lookout over at thegiveawaygeek.com, as well as these show notes once it's up, for a giveaway they're running with us, and back the game. Last Days of Athelbray. Apocalypse before the 29th of June, so you can be the first one off the planet of Athelbray once the apocalypse is going on. Have you seen Sprocket the game that just launched a Kickstarter? It looks awesome. You each get a card from a different level and build the object it asks you to. The first one who builds it in complete form and dings the bell proceeds to the next round or next level and they'll get a harder card. It reminds me of Ubongo that we played in game group except the pieces are 3D and play gets harder the further you proceed. 
Their Kickstarter video shows and tells you exactly how to play. It looks pretty fun. Plus, we're teaming up with them to do a giveaway over on thegiveawaygeek.com. Plus, we'll be doing an interview with them as well. So, in the meantime, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so you don't miss that show. And also, in the meantime, go watch our video and check out the game and back Sprocket the game before Tuesday, the 9th of July. From proud backers of our Kickstarter campaign, Casual Game Revolution, the Casual Game Insider magazine will be returning to Kickstarter for its 8th year on June 25th for only 2 weeks. You can get great deals on annual and lifetime subscriptions, back issues, and advertising. They will also be announcing a new feature that you won't want to miss. Casual Game Insider has been receiving high praise from gaming media since the first issue in 2012. It has been called the best board gaming magazine on the market by several reviewers, a magazine that is serious about quality. By Purple Pawn and a great resource and fun read by the Spiel Podcast. Bezier Games has praised its super accessible format that's both welcoming and engaging. And Ultra Prowl says the paper quality and production quality are just flat out better than most publications in tabletop. Find out what all the hype is about at casualgamerevolution.com backslash kickstarter. I just found another miniatures game as well. Slightly 30 years ago, I thought these years would be more awesome than they are. We still don't have flying cars, nor real hoverboards, but I still am a diehard true and blue fan of Back to the Future. So, about 30 years in the future from now is Omnicore Protocol. If our world doesn't turn out like this come 30 years from now, I won't be as sad as the lack of Back to the Future tech has made me. Omnicore Protocol is an intra-apocalyptic squad-based arena combat miniatures game for one to four players with a third-party enemy that your opponent controls. There's four great factions to choose from. My favorite from the looks of it would have to be the one with a huge elephant named Jugger and Bob the Bear. Let's make this game a reality by backing it on Kickstarter before Thursday the 20th of June. Make sure you subscribe to the show so you don't miss the episode in which I sit down to chat about this awesome looking game. If you liked any of the games we talked about in today's episode, make sure you check out their Kickstarter campaigns to show them and us a little love. Backing them goes a long way. Plus, make sure to stay up to date on all the giveaways we're doing over at thegiveawaygeek.com. There will be at least two to three new giveaways going live over there next week. It's our least favorite time as well as yours. So until next episode, make sure you go ahead and get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others in the geek fold by sharing our episodes with others as well as keeping up with the giveaways we're doing over at thegiveawaygeek.com. Game Relief out. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up. <laughs> <laughs>